Hey everyone, David C. Anderson from the Knife Center coming at you from SHOT Show 2020. We're here at the Artisan Cutlery slash CJRB booth with my friend Russell. Yo, what up man? How you doing Russell? Doing good. He's going to take us through some of the new models first. We're going to look at some of the new Artisan stuff. we got some cool new designers oh, yeah. uh, or, or some cool, cool new collaborations, some cool new locking mechanisms mm -hmm. to take a look at. I'm really excited. And then we're going to swing over and take a look at some of the CJRB stuff. All right, sweet. What do we got first? Okay, so. I'm going to start with some of our new designer knives. Uh, this first one is not technically new, but it is smaller. This is the Hyperion, designed by Daryl Caston or D-Rocket. And we've uh, shrunk this down to a three-inch blade size. We released our original Hyperion uh, at Last Blade Show West. Great knife. But we decided to kind of go with a smaller format for something that's a bit more like a Barlow or a Lanny. And this just feels really nice in the hand. Really, like, small and compact, very gentlemanly, and that nice carbon fiber accent and that super minimized clip just have a very kind of, I, I call it kind of like a retro future look. It's got a good modern styling with a traditional blade. Yeah, you know, the, the sort of quote unquote modern traditional yeah. um, style can go so many different ways. But the way you've kind of managed to update that Lanny's clip uh, design into a modern flipper with a frame lock or bolster lock, however you want to refer to it, fancy materials, nice hidden lanyard attachment yeah, nice point. And small. Great gentleman's knife. It is really slick looking. Like it really is very classy looking, but it's comfortable in the hand. Like give, give it a full grip. Just try it in a full grip. Not bad at it's all. It's got a. Yeah. It's got that kind of a. I, I refer to it as a big butt, but it's got a lot of space in the back to get grip on. And, and it, it catches does, the pinky there, at least does. for my hands, quite well. And it's really comfortable. A few and, different colors. Uh, several different. So this will be coming in black, gray, blue, and green, I believe. So all, all the greatest hits for artists. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Pretty much. It's very, very cool little knife. I like it's that so a lot. Slick. And it's nice that it's a little knife. It yeah, feels yeah. little, but it doesn't. It performs big. And we're S35 VN. S35 titanium. Great performance. Fiber. Yeah. Very cool design. The big one is really big. Yes, it so is a pretty is, big knife. This is a, a a little bit more manageable size and very easy to carry. Agree. Gonna look great in a suit pocket or your jeans. Yes. All right. So let's go on to the next one. We have a new design by Dirk Pinkerton. The name on this one is still to be determined, but this is our, uh, I, I think I would say our second tactical knife by Dirk Pinkerton, because the first one is, yeah, we'll call that tactical. tactical. Yeah, tactical, <laughs> tactical tree chopper. But this one, Dirk designed to be a, he calls it a handle minimized knife. So pretty much this should fit in your hand comfortably and give you just the right amount of blade without a lot of handles sticking out on the bottom. So. This one has a very aggressive Tonto. It's kind of a, I, I could almost say it's a slightly upswept Tonto. And this it does very, have a little bit of a trailing point. Yeah, and a barely. very curved contour handle. That's funny, because if you've ever handled any of Dirk Pinkerton's other designs, the guy does some real magic with handles. I've handed this knife to so many people at this show with, you know, I got small hands. I have like your, your average medium, small, medium sized men's glove. I handed this to people who have giant meat mitts, like just some serious meat hooks. And they're like, oh, the knife feels really comfortable. And for me, I have not run to a single person who does not think this knife feels comfortable in hand. It's just some, some black magic dirt does to mm -hmm. make these feel great. So we have the an old school external stop pin on this knife, which nice kind of like, chunky too. it kind of brings, yeah. it, it harkens back to like the, the, like the late 90s, early 2000s when like the custom knife market was kind of ramping up and it was more, it was the machining started. It, it's kind of cool looking. It's got a, its own kind of style to it. Really, it feels very sturdy. Like, it really yeah. is this clunk when you open it. Yeah. And uh, there's a bit of internal jimping on here. So both here and internally. So if you happen to hold this one backhanded, you have a bit of extra grip as you bear down on the knife, but none if you're not really squeezing it. And a nice uh, blind screw pocket clip. Very, actually, surprisingly discreet in the pocket. And of course, the hidden lanyard tube. So here, let me give you this guy. I, I need to see how this fits in your hand. Because again, it, I feel like it's, you said everyone thinks it's comfortable. I feel like I'm being challenged here. A little bit. <laughs> Flips nicely, and it feels good. Yeah. 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 It is. It is really crazy how nice it does. It's, even, even though the tip is kind of upswept, it the shape of the handle points you down a little bit, which would work really well reverse, like you were saying. That's kind of the intention. If you're, if you're coming in, you need to pierce something. That point's going to come in at a very good angle. I like that. So we haven't really done any pure tactical knives, but design-wise, Dirk has done a lot of exceptional tactical knives, very purpose-driven, 
and this really does fit the mold, and it, it's not like it's going to look out of place as an everyday carry. It's not a big knife. Definitely, definitely. But just, it's got some, it's got a little panache to it. I think there it's a good go. word. <laughs> so we're really happy with this one. Still working on the name, but another, Still, another different S35 picture. again, S35, titanium. S35, titanium. Yeah. Probably going to come in other colors. We've only done a gray one so far. Uh, we may actually stick to just gray on this one. We may also do some other colors. But right now, it's still in its proto stages. Got, there's going to be some tweaking. But we're pretty happy with it. It's, it's looking good. It's Very looking nice. like a good, it's a good departure. It's, it's a good tactical design. It's really slick. Here we go. Nice. All right, cool. All right, so oh, this is my favorite. I'm really happy with this one. So this is our first collaboration with Ray Laconico. Uh, I, I have a bit of a story for this knife, so I'll, I'll let you play with it first. So I have been a huge fan of Ray Laconico for a long time. I really like his stuff. I really like his design aesthetic. He lives in the same state as me. I, I see him at shows, and Ray is a, just a really nice guy. He is a very just... He's a very soft-spoken, gentlemanly guy who has a very, I think, exceptional eye for design. He's a sculptor. He makes stuff look good. He makes it smooth. He makes things feel good. So I saw this design. Um, I saw this design on Instagram first when he posted this one. He made a custom one. Uh, two, it was a uh, both sides of carbon fiber, uh, inset uh, titanium leaf lock in there, and it, it really, really, really slick. Very, mm -hmm. very kind of like. I can't say it's truly like gentlemen's, but it wasn't what I would call like a heavy duty like tactical folder. It was it was slick. And I saw him at USN and I was like, right, right, I gotta see this knife. I, I really love it. And he's like, yeah, sure, check it out. I handled it, I loved it, I gave it back to him, and I swear he walked away from the table and someone bought it from just out of his pocket. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Oh, okay, fine. <laughs> so I met up with him afterwards and we, we chatted about doing a design and you know. We got lunch, we, we chatted some more, he and I picked one off his Instagram, I'm like, hey, can we do this one? And he was like, yeah, sure, why not? And he calls me up a couple days later saying, hey, you know what, um, I like that design, I think it'd be great, but you know what, it looks a little similar to some of my other designs, can I work on another one with you? I'm like, well, sure, but what about this one? And he's like, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> so after some conversation, we kind of worked this out, we worked it to a point where he's very happy, like, he has protos, he's really happy with this, and it's just like, this knife is meant to be light, it's meant to be slicey, it's meant to be grippy, and we nailed it. So this one has a full carbon fiber scale on one side, just straight carbon fiber, keeps it light. It's got a fairly thin lock face. Uh, this one actually has a bit of micro milling on the back, or a bit of added texture. And we actually, uh, after talking, we, we did kind of do away with the usual Arlaconico logo on the spine, and instead we actually engraved it right down here. I'll flip that knife over so it's right down here. Right on the backspace. Yeah, there. we engraved it in the backspace instead. But you guys, you do your logo there often exactly. as well, so it's a good kind of melding. Yeah, and it worked yeah. out nice. It kept the blade really clean. This is the Damascus version, so we'll actually be doing this in Damascus and S35VN. But my favorite thing about this one is this is just such an excellent front flipper. It, it flips well. It's very elegant feeling it overall. It is. But you still, that with that modified worn cliff, you're going to be able to pierce very well. Mm -hmm. It's going to make a great package opener, box yes. cutter. He actually yeah. said this is a great kitchen knife, which okay. I don't disagree with. On top of that, we also had him do the clip for us. And this clip is just in the hand, just giving it a full squeeze hand like this. It, you can barely even feel it. It's been contoured, it's long enough, it fits really well in the pocket, and this knife just feels so well designed, and I think we really executed it just amazingly. It I am so happy with it. It definitely feels premium, and there's a large and a small too, right? Yes. Well, we'll just say the small is kind of under the radar now, but... Um, I do happen to have the proto right here. Oh, very nice. So we are working on a small. We kept the blade under three inches. It is a 2.9 inch blade. We're not sure exactly when it's coming out, but okay. um, Ray has the proto. He seems to be very happy with it. And this thing, just tell me what you think that weighs. Put me on the spot again. Yeah. 2.4 ounces. I hope you're right, because I have no idea, but it is super <laughs> light. It is really light. <laughs> How are you going to tell me? No. Oh, <laughs> killing me. Killing me. But. We're hoping to get this one out sometime soon, but I'm almost just like, I'm so proud of the way this turned out. It's just so slick, it's so elegant, it's just so, it's so good. And man, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna shut up about that because I, I can go on and on about that, but. <laughs> it's I'm definitely really very nice. I like the feel of it. Uh, elegant, elegant so cutter, good. especially so in, that, in that Damascus. Yes. Yeah, very much. So that's gonna be Damascus NS35, and uh, that is out now just like right like two days two right, days right before now. shot show so <laughs> yes look for it soon so all right this is what i'm really excited about Ooh, okay yeah. I, I like truly new stuff mm -hmm. 
We've got a new lock, a new proprietary lock yes. from Artisan Cutlery. It took us a while to work on this one. It's been about three years in the works. We tried to make a lock that was one, unique, functional, and not something that anyone's really done before. So we did scour the books. We made sure that this was something that was unique, was not used by anyone else. The action of this will be familiar to some, but the way it's constructed is way out there because it's pretty much, well, let me show you. So the top of this guy is the whole lock. This whole unit right here houses the spring and a 3D machine titanium, I guess I just call it a, a lever, essentially. So the, the action, one way is familiar, so you pull down this side right here, closes the knife snaps open with a flipper. So immediately the first thing I thought of is the crossbar style lock, which exactly. of course Benchmade uh, is known for really bringing it to the forefront, uh, but it's not quite like that is what you exactly. were telling me. Because this is actually a whole housing, it's, a, it's pretty much a dome that's been machined and it covers the whole unit that is the lock. And then along with the spring that's inserted down here, it's something that's a pretty different piece. But the one cool thing about this, well actually I'll say three cool things about this, is you can close this in some ways, you cannot close the crossbar style the crossbar lock. Style lock. Yeah. So um, you can actually put your finger up here and close it like this. Like so. You can use one finger to close it. So if you just put, well, let's say a camera side, let's, uh, yeah, like that, with just one finger. You can actually, the way that I do this, which is not the safest, but I actually really like, you can put your finger on top of the lock here, pull down, drop in the finger, release the tension, and the knife is now stiff in place and just close it with the top of your finger. I think the style of this lends itself to being a lot more effective as long as it's hold, held properly, the lock is incredibly safe because as your finger is on top of that, because this on top of this, the, the unit right there, you're actually reinforcing the lock. Mm -hmm. Now we have some tweaks to make. We want to maybe adjust the spring tension and change it up a little bit to make sure it's ideal. But right now we are getting close to the final version of this knife. So this still is prototype right here. It's yeah. very close or to not being a prototype, but it is, <laughs> it is still prototyping. It's one of the final test mules perhaps. Honestly, it turned out great. And on top of that, I love the blade. I love the blade. I love the handle shape. I love blade the blade. looks cool. It's very artisan, it is. I would say. It is. And we can get a look at that, at that action. You can, can kind of see the whole mechanism. I'll hold it this way so the blade doesn't fall on me. You can see that whole mechanism sliding back in the spine there. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And that big flipper really does help just in case there's closure, in case there are problems, in case there are accidents. It's an extra, like, I can't even call it a mechanical safety, but it's just like by design, sure. there are extra things in place to keep this knife safe. And like a frame lock where when you grip it tighter, you're, exactly. you're only reinforcing. Yeah. If you're really bearing down, you're pushing that lock into the tang of the blade. Exactly. So it's it's making it even stronger. Exactly. And yeah. we get a lot of people online who are like, oh, that knife isn't safe. That's going to close in your fingers. Well, you know, if you use any knife wrong, yes, it'll close in your fingers. This is assumed that you're not going to be using this knife in a uh, dumb way. And or, then with the fuller there, too, you've got the, uh, exactly. the long thumb open, too. In fact, if I could even get this right, I think. I think we could even get this guy to a uh, finger flick too. Just, we like options here at ours. And you have the <laughs> option to open this thing in so many different ways. It's great. And I'm, any name on this yet? I, I'm working on that. Okay. <laughs> We're still working on the name of the lock too. So just TBD on the lock, TBD on the name. Very coming cool. Coming soon. Coming Very soon. Very cool. Name coming soon. All right. So on top of that, We've also done a CGRB version of this knife. CJRB, of course, being your, your budget, budget line, line. for so Artisan. I'm not exactly sure the price one is going to be hovering around the other CGRB models. Hopefully it will be. So we can keep this under 60, that'd be great. We'll see. But this, instead of being a titanium full unit, it's actually a steel unit on rails. So same mechanism, just a little bit more compact, and uh, the machining process is different. So same thing, use it that way. Put your finger on top, do it that way. One thumb, do it that way, et cetera, et cetera. Do the finger close, et cetera, and so forth. Sure. But this one has a nice feel too. Same thing, nice, like I pulled the carbon fiber version, but we're probably gonna be doing G10, multiple colors of G10 on this one as well. This is very much a, I'll call this a very friendly user. And with the way this is constructed, nice sturdy blade, full handle, it's practical. Mm -hmm. And this way you have a true ambidextrous knife, and if we can keep that price down, how many times you run into an ambidextrous lock like this that is at an affordable price point? Right. 
And the lock, in addition to being ambidextrous, the other advantage, of course, is you can close it while keeping your fingers out of the path of the exactly. blade. Exactly. So just kind of a little bit more inherent safety than some other mm -hmm. locking mechanisms out there. Yes. And very easy to use. Yeah. Flips nicely. I say even this one flips a little bit better than this one right yeah. now, but they're prototypes still. Yeah. They're still ironing out the final details. You know, we're just very getting, nice. we want to get it just dialed in just right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And man, if that price stays that way, that is one killer knife. I would agree. Oh, man. I would agree. No name on this knife yet either? Uh, <laughs> it's no. the nice user. TBD, TBD. <laughs> From New Locks, we have started doing some non-locking knives as well. So, we have our first true slip joint. This is designed by Dylan Mallory, just like the Centros and the RKO. Dylan is a great guy. He's actually here with us at the show. Where are you? Hey, Dylan. Hi, hey, Dylan. Dylan. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is his first slip joint design. And this is our first time doing a slip joint. So we had a, we had a, a good bit riding on this. So this is a nice, like, it, here, just see how light this guy is. Like, Very light. It weighs nothing. And you've got a classic kind of blade shape to mm -hmm. it, too. Not too out there. Very eminently usable. Mm -hmm. And I like the Jade G10 as yeah. well. It's a nice touch. We're going to do different colors. We have, a, we have a gray one sitting around. I'm sure we're going to see about doing some other materials. People have requested my card in wood. We'll, we'll see about that. Got a hidden lanyard point there. Have you mm -hmm. thought about a pocket clip at all? Maybe. Perhaps. But this one may be a slip for this one, actually. A leather or possibly a canvas slip. Something simple. Something, sure. you know, easy to throw in the pocket. But this one has some nice walk and talk. I say, you, you nailed the action quite yeah, good. It's not super heavy. Mm -hmm. It's just about right, I yeah. would say. And for something this nice size. Nice half stop, which, you know, always appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And let's see. I'll hold it close to the mic and we'll see if we can pick up the sound. Clank. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah, it feels, it feels just right. Exactly. Yeah. And one nice thing about this one is that uh, some people brought this up and they mentioned this really doesn't need the, the nail nick right here. So because when you have plenty of clearance right here to, to just grab the blade, we uh, honestly, it's kind of been, it's kind of been mixed here because some people are like, no, we don't want the, the nail nick because it's just extra stuff on the blade. Some people are like, well, yes, because then you immediately know it's a slip joint. Whatever works. I like the nail nick because I do like that, that factor of like it's a slip, it's a slip joint. But you know what? You have clearance. This knife is not hard to get open. No. And my thing with a lot of traditional slip joints is like, all right, I'm going to dig my nail in there and be like, you know, pry it open. It doesn't feel great to me. It's extra stuff I got to do where if I want my knife out, I just want to be able to grab it and go. And because of this deep chamfer right here, it works great. And on top of that, this extra chamfer right here, if you happen to have the knife fail on you, it stops on the finger. It doesn't snap down. It's a great design. And Coupled with the size and the weight and this really slicey blade, this is just a great drop-in pocket kind of knife. I see you've got uh, actual Torx hardware. Is this disassemblable by the uh, by the end user? They could take it apart? Yeah, voids a warranty, you know, as most knives do, but yes, yes it is. Right, but you can adjust it a little bit if something's going with you and you want to take care of that. Just watch someone customize those scales. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, absolutely. That's like fade dye on there. Ooh. Ooh. Another challenge issue. Ooh. <laughs> Make your own scan. No, don't. <laughs> Disassembly of our knives, always the warranty. That's and uh, Sandvik 14C28. Funny enough, yes, we're trying that out. We've had a lot of people comment on our D2 knives, like, I'm tired of Chinese D2, tired of, you know, Flipper D2, Flipper D2, Flipper Fatigue, D2 Fatigue. I get it. I like our D2. I think our D2 performs incredibly well. We harden it into the 60 range so it does cut and perform and, sh and hold an edge really well. But people want something truly stainless. So we're, we're going to see if we're, that how it's received. So far, people have been very excited to see that we have some Sandvik steel on here. And I think that's a great steel. It's not, yep. not going to hold an edge like some of the particle steels out there, but it takes a very fine edge, mm -hmm. holds it very well, easy to maintain. It's a solid steel, Again, really and, solid steel. And the price point is very reasonable. And we'll see if this one, we may do this one, who knows, this might go in M390 titanium, we might just stick with the G10, but um, we have options on this one. We're yeah. looking into seeing what people like, and so far this has been a knife that a lot of people have really appreciated, because it's, it's a departure from what we were seen as. Like, people know us for big chunking knives, mm -hmm. big heavy knives, long knives, something, you know, lots of character, lots of flair, lots of, you know, we go big. This is go small. Yeah, and with a, with a kind of versatile platform like mm -hmm. this, if you wanted to dress it up and do some of those special editions, Absolutely. sky's the limit. Absolutely. Yeah. It's just, the scales are doable, we can customize it, we can slap on some special materials, micarta, G10, titanium Damascus, etc. And we are just excited to have this as a new format of our knives. And if this does well, we're going to see about doing more slip joints in the future. Very nice. So that turned out really great. I'm really happy with this one. 
but it's not the only non-locking knife we have on the table. So here. we these these are trial runs. So <laughs> we're just trying these out. So far, reception on these has been incredible, which I wasn't sure was going to happen. But so I, I'm sure you recognize this knife. Like, the Archeo. The Archeo. This has been out since uh, last year, give or take. Something like a little, little bit, bit far, yeah, a little, little bit, bit more than last yeah. year. Yeah. So we decided to just muck around with this guy. And if you look on the inside, there is no lock in there. No liner, no no special lock, no nothing. This is on a double ball detent system. So it's a, I guess you kind of call it a slip joint, but mostly it's a well, non-locking knife. A little bit more like a friction folder yeah. than, a, than a slip joint. because Friction folder with yeah. a detent. Mm -hmm. But pretty much that allows this knife to be very snappy. Oh, I missed that one off. <laughs> so snap, snap. But it's a double detent flipper. I missed every single one of those. I feel terrible because this one's just like, ah, oh, <laughs> show how snappy the Snap, snap. It is though, yeah. It's a fun knife. It's got a great fidget factor. But on top of that, this is actually a tiny bit smaller than the original Archeo. Just, kinda, just by a hair. It's kind of in between the two sizes, it's, it's but like a little a, closer to the large. A little bit. And we actually, uh, we're not sure how we're going to do this, but we added the titanium pocket clip on G10. We did a titanium backspacer. We added that nice little ring on there. This one's in Damascus. So we're just seeing how this works. But here's here's the kicker. As I play with this, but God, that is very It sweet. is very fidget. I'll let you very, play that because it's very satisfying. Very before fidget I, friendly. Before I, I get agree. on to that final feature. And you get enough force behind it, you can actually kick right yeah, out if yeah. you're not careful. But it's fun. It feels good. It does. It's not like it doesn't feel secure. That Agreed. that snap on on opening is very positive. Very satisfying. Very positive. And even if you're you're using it, you've got that flipper tab. Yeah. If it and were were to come come loose a little bit, snap. Your finger's going to keep it from moving. But here's any the thing. Further. So this is excellent for the European and Asian market, where in places you cannot carry locking knives at all. This is really great. You get our designs, you get our aesthetics, you get good materials, you get a great handle and a great size without having to have a locking knife. You are sacrificing very little in terms of quality of production and design. And just, just as one more added thing, we'll see if this is a thing, but we thought this was a good idea. You notice there's that little hole right there and this little long lanyard on the end here? There is a small steel pin right here. And this guy just kind of goes right in here clicks into place, and now your knife is essentially locked. It's not a locking knife, per se. Just coincidentally, something just happened to get in the way of the blade. I don't know how that happened. Pop it out, and you're back to, you know, non-locking knife. And on top of that, it goes in again, and it's locked in the closed position. Very nice. Without truly being a locking knife. Absolutely. So now, if I want to drop this in my pocket and I know it's going to be rocking around in a bag or, you know, it's rocking around my pocket as I'm moving, I feel more secure with this being non-locking. Absolutely. We've done the same thing with the other, another model, the, uh, the Cutlass that we also released last year. And this one again, Contro G10 Damascus. I think we, we just grabbed two Damascus ones, didn't we? Yeah. 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 We also have it in D2, but again, testing. This one we actually picked because it has this choil. And this way, you have, you have even more versatility with this model because you can just hold it here and you don't even have to worry about this coming undone. You're holding on to the blade itself. It still has that nice smooth action, nice and snappy. There we go, that, that feels a bit better. I'm, yeah. get, I'm getting the rhythm yeah. now, yeah. <laughs> but here, just go ahead and play with that for a yeah, minute. It's very nice, it's yeah. very nice. And the Cutlass was, kind of, was a bit of a sleeper model for us. We released that one, I believe, let's see. I think it was Blade Show West last year, and it just kind of didn't hit at the right time. It's a really great model, a model after a Chinese Dao. It's got the ring on the end. It's got that kind of, I can't say it's a big cleaver, but it's a wide cleaver it's at the tip. Yeah. yeah. And it's a good knife. It's got it's neutral kind of arrows. I've always kind of a, as a cross between a cleaver and a scimitar yeah. in a so way. A slashing a knife, I don't know, something. But as a non-locking knife, I mean, where are you going to find a non-locking legal carry knife with a blade like that? Or a non-locking flipper. Exactly. You know? And the action on these flippers is really good. It's it is. very positive. It is. So that's fun. And we're, we're just seeing what the reception here at SHOT Show is. And I think with the reception we've gotten, um, we might be seeing some production on these guys. So I hope so. We'll I think they're, it's, a, it's a new take on the double detent uh, non-locking folder. Yeah. Um, first flipper that I've encountered. I don't know if someone You're else, right. any custom guys might have done something like that, mm -hmm. but it's the first one I've encountered. They so. work great. And you know what? At the end of the day, it really is still just an exceptional knife with exceptional like exceptional feels and ergonomics. Locking or not, it's still just done well. There you go. Yeah. So that kind of covers the artisan stuff and one CGRB model. 
All right, we're going to move this stuff off the table and come back with some CJRV. Be right back. All right, now that we've covered a lot of the new artisan stuff, we're going to take a look at some of the CJRB stuff that's slowly been coming out as well. Some of the sort of the next generation of the evolution of CJRB yes. and some of these models. So CJRB came out only a few months ago. The entire line was released just like, like I, I, not even a year ago. After Blade Show yeah. East last year. So yeah, in, we, within the last six months, yeah. they've, they've We had our landed, prototypes yeah. for CJRB at Blade Show at East. At Blade Show East. And yeah. the final release, I believe, started around October of last year. In that time, CGRB has blown up for us. They have been some of the most popular knives we've had on our site, through our dealers, and you know, they're excellent. It's a price-focused knife that sacrifices, that sacrifices nothing. I'm really proud of the way they came out. They've all been so good for us. So The, the action on all of them that I've handled yeah. has been very good. The construction, there's been nothing to complain about mm -hmm. whatsoever. They've just been built a little more simply yes. than some of the real high-end knives, but no less, not built any less well. Exactly. Yeah. So here's the thing. Those original five models that came out with CGRB, along with the other newer ones that you've gotten at Knife Center, those were great. Nothing wrong with them. Exceptional. And they sold so well, we just kind of went along and said, well, why bother shortchanging our customers with less quality production when we can still, you know, we can take a little hit and do a little extra work on them and make them even better. So the newer models that we have released, and almost all of these are actually available right now. Most of these just have a little extra work to make them more premium. They feel better. They perform better. And I think the Gobi was one of the first of those yes. that had a little bit more going on with the handle, a little more contouring, mm -hmm. um, and just felt really good. Like, yeah, still we, felt fantastic. Instead of doing slab G10, we switched over to CNC mill G10. We put a aluminum backspacer, that orange aluminum backspacer in there, the little pivot ring. Like It was extra touches. It's the touches that make it a knife even more personal. Mm -hmm. So we have a few more to show, and almost all these are available now. I'm going to start off with the one that I gave the most uh, excessive name, the Barranca. Oh man, love saying that. So this is kind of like a werewolf version of the Tala. So mm -hmm. instead of having that fine point, we give it a sloped almost, I can't even say it's a true worn clip because there's so many angles going on here, but at the end of the day, this thing is just a beastly cutter. Yeah. Like it just works so hard, especially with this spot right here for your thumb. And you'll notice this one isn't copper. We decided to throw a couple more special materials in there and the copper one is available. If you like that extra weight, it even has a full copper backspacer and a copper lanyard hole, and it's just, it's got, it's got some weight. It's got some weight, but it's just got a lot more character because you'll notice there's that the chamfering on the handle, you know, a little yeah, bit of a extra, lot of extra machining going on yeah, there. There's yeah. extra detail work on there, and it feels good. I mean, as a knife, would you expect this knife to be uncomfortable? Do you think it, like, it, it works well? It feels very well. Just we added a little extra. And tell me about the name. You were telling me something <laughs> a little bit about that earlier. A Barranca is a, so with a lot of the CGRBs, I've been trying to kind of have a wilderness theme with the, with the names. We're trying to kind of come up with names that are not really like, I'm not going to give it like, you know, the super tactical names. I'm not going to call it the Air Force One. I'm not going to call it, you know, the, the Soaring Eagle. We're keeping it simple. And a Barranca is a land formation that is a slope that goes into an arroyo, which dives into a river, which, I mean, I, I couldn't resist. It's too perfect. <laughs> I, I love it. And I just... The name sounds good. Barranca. <laughs> it's a good name. It's a good name. Oh, I love it. This so, guy I also really like. Yes, this is the Agave. So this one actually has aluminum scales. We tried doing a little bit of aluminum on here uh, because we had some people who just really wanted some metal on their knives. So we were like, let's, let's try it out. And it turned out looking, if you get that shine on there, that looks really premium. You got a little bit of a subtle orange peel texture a little going bit, yeah. on. Some nice contouring, mm -hmm. so it feels good and looks good too. Exactly. Get that light bouncing off. Of exactly, it. and the agave was really like a very natural looking knife. Like all these curves are very organic. The choil right here really lets you get in on that blade. And it's very much like I, I, I would kind of call it a leaf shaped blade because it really is just like these nice sloping lines. The handle is really comfortable. It has this nice, just kind of, I'd say like a grippy back kind of feel, and it settles itself very nicely in the hand. Absolutely. Just, I could see this behaving very much like kind of a modified worn clip. Yes. See a lot of good use out of that tip. Indexes very well. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's got some nice sliciness to it. Reversible deep carry pocket clip. Yep. Both sides. Yeah. And then the standoffs instead of a backspace. It keeps it a little bit lighter. Mm -hmm. And it just, it's a cool knife. So the, yeah. that's the agave. And then let's go a bit more wild. So we have the mangrove. 
This one we did a chip pattern on here, so kind of that like rock style pattern. Big, uh, I, I, I don't know if this is quite accurate, but I almost think this is like a loveless or a skinning style blade. And this one just, in pocket, it's actually rather small because that big blade just folds up in there really nicely because it kind of hangs over, hangs over the, uh, the, 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 that curvature on the knife. Mm -hmm. And it's just got this huge skinning knife on there. It's just such a neat, like, I, I, I have a hard time describing this knife in particular because it's big blade, big wide leaf shape. Kind of has, has a bit of that, uh, a bit of that bull nose skinner yes, profile there we go. going on. And because your fingers are kind of off the surface of the knife and the blade dips a little bit lower, you have more cutting surface available. And it's just a really neat knife. Yeah. This one actually does not have the inside liner lock. It's full steel because we wanted this one to be a bit more balanced. If you were going to use this in the field, we want you to have a bit more balance in hand and make it a bit more comfortable. We wanted it wide. Okay. Yeah. And it looks great. And especially with the black and like the pivot collar. Also, to mention, these also do come in other styles. So the Bronco comes in G10. Same with the Agave. Uh, same with the Mangrove. And it's just a very, it's a neat knife. It's, it's yeah, hard to really like speak it. about that one in particular. So now this is actually one of my favorites. So this one is the Feldspar. And this one, in two I, different sizes. Two different sizes. We are doing a small version and a large version, which is a three point, three point, about a 3.5 and a 3.0. And this one is just clean. It's clean, 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 clean lines, clean contours inset liner, and just a nice, simple drop point blade. I mean, Very, it, clean, not, clean is the right word. It's, it's refined down to just what you need. I like kind of the continuous curve to the edge too. It's gonna to be very and slicing. And it's a fine tip. It's not a really like chunky tip. Mm -hmm. It does have a fine working tip, which I prefer with my, in my everyday carry. I like a knife with a fine tip because I find more uses for a fine tip than a chunky, heavy, like, you know, wide tip. True. There's plenty of uses for both, but I prefer tips on mine. And this one was one that I really pressed to have, like, let's do this. It's simple. It's kind of quiet. It's, you know, the, the deep carry is very deep. And it just is a great user. Here, let's, sw let's switch. So give, you the, give you the big one. I'll take the small one. But I think this is a beautiful knife. And as a user, it's excellent. And as something you can just chuck in your pocket and not worry about. It's sure. great, but then keep in mind. But you still have a nice contoured handle. It still exactly. feels a little more nice than some other budget stuff out there. But here's the thing. The price on these is not much different. Give or take a few dollars more than an older model, like the Centros, like the Tala, like the Taiga. You get all these nice additional touches for just a few extra dollars, maybe not even. When it comes down to the final numbers, you still get a much more premium knife and they feel amazing. And we're just really proud that we're able to do something like this and produce something at this quality. Like we, the original CGRBs were already an exceptional quality for the price. Like, I have no doubts about that. And I don't think a lot of other people do. They were great. And this is just- Even better. Even yeah, better. Just taking it one step further. We're yeah. stepping it up even more. These are meant to be at a competitive, and practical price point for people who want a user, they want a good knife for a good price with good materials without compromising the basics of construction and steel composition. So I'm really happy with these. So yeah. one more, one more, because the Kinetic Tool was so popular, we decided to do a CGR Beavers. This one is not available as of yet, but it will be soon. We actually changed the weighting on this a little bit, so it actually flips a little better. Let me make sure that's in camera. So the best thing, at least for me, we just took out all the tools and just made it strictly a bottle opener. That's it, just beer bottles. Just pop a cap, have a cold one, don't cut yourself. Yeah. But we kept the same mechanism. It's still got the action. It still has the really neat mechanism. It still has all the features from the uh, previous Kinetic Tool, Kinetic Tool models, just in this really cool CGRB package that will hopefully be coming in at a very reasonable price point. So the handles are, have a little more scoop they do. to them. They're not as completely straight yeah. as the others. Just a little bit lighter, yeah. a yeah. little bit more balanced towards the center, and it does flip pretty nicely. I actually handed this to some people at the uh, at Blade West who were doing valley flipping. They liked it. Yeah, yeah. it's still. It's still just really neat. Yeah. It's, a, it's fun. It, you know, they don't flip like high end valleys, mm -hmm. but 
we don't expect them to. Yeah, they well, still flip yeah. very capable. Then, you know, the auto function does add another, a little bit. Yeah, another, yeah. another level of fun yeah. to how you play with it. But I could see that working real well at camp as like a pot hook or exactly. something too, you know? <laughs> it's, got, it's, it's still multifunction, it's a yeah. hook. Yeah. But yeah, so that one should be coming out soon. We're still working on finalizing that, but those are the new CGRB bottles for this year. Actually, technically, not even new, they're already out and they are available. Awesome, awesome. At, at Knife Center, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You soon, soon, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, that's all we've got to show you today. Russell, thanks so much for taking us through Thank you for all being here, this man. real cool stuff. Uh, really appreciate it. If you guys want to get your hands on any of these knives, we're going to leave links in the description that you can use to take you over to KnifeCenter.com. Keep sticking around for the rest of our great SHOT Show 2020 footage, you guys. It's going to be amazing. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, man.